Bro, oh. <laughs> Are you tired of selling your clips and missing open shots? Well, look no further. These are the best shooting tips on NBA 2K25. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, CJ, a.k.a. No Limit CJ. Welcome to a brand new video. Now, today, I'm giving you guys shooting tips and advice that I wish I knew on day one of NBA 2K25. This is just day one, but this is for the rest of the year. This year out of all 2Ks might be one of the hardest 2K to learn how to shoot consistently. It feels like you can time the shot the same exact way time and time again, but somehow the shots aren't going in. But some of these tips I'm going to share with you guys help me go from inconsistent to consistent. If you guys are new to the channel, I'd recommend hitting subscribe. I'm going to be plugging y'all up with a lot of tips this year. And if you can set a Lego, let's try to go for 25 less in this video. 25 less. Sorry, a little base. Diving into tip number one, though, we're going to talk about jump shot boots. Y'all, when I tell you these are so essential in 2K, it's not even funny. I feel like every year it is, low-key. This year, out of all years, have I noticed, like, they changed the way you play the game. So me and my boy Zeke, we went on a 21-game win streak. That's the highest win streak we got so far. We hopped on because no one was pulling up. You know what I'm saying? But I noticed after, like, game 15, bro, I couldn't hit my shots, like, when it really mattered. Like, I was just shooting so inconsistent. I was hitting but it was really inconsistent and through a lot of trial and error i have a 45 three point percentage i plan on getting that up to a 50 55 really soon but i noticed in the beginning of the game streak jump shot boost literally changed everything i know it's like a thousand five hundred bc each so if you buy say 40 let's say 40 if that's how much park games you play a day or whatever that's like six thousand bc bills aren't cheap either so we gotta save this but i'll tell you what man it's, it's a good investment especially if you know you're gonna play a lot i definitely recommend buying jump shot boost to earn the VC back throughout the games that you play, it goes such a long way. Like when people say like they work, they actually work. It's not a myth. Like your green window is a lot more hittable and I have had games where I go like six for six and stuff like that. And I've also had games where I'm inconsistent. I feel like the games that I was missing and like going like three for 10 say was because my jump shot boost would run out. So I can't emphasize enough. You definitely want to put these on even to the level that you can, even if it's five, I don't know. Put these on and you guys will notice a difference in your green consistency. Now on the tip number two is shooting type. So if you guys go to the settings and then the options, the options slash quit, and you go to controller settings, you will notice that your shot timing profile has different options. So there's difficulty based, real player, low risk, no more risk, and high risk. And I would highly advise you, bro, if you guys are willing to learn, not only willing to get the best risk possible but you're willing to learn like here's the deal like i'm not a perfect shooter i know that even when i was missing i stuck through because i knew that if i mastered high risk reward i'll get a high risk reward you know what i'm saying so the best way to like master your jump shot and get the most greens possible is going to be high risk reward now you can lose you can use low risk reward for instance low risk says it only has a small impact on your shot chances and your player ratings are more important so if you have a 99 three-pointer let's say 2k will decide if that shot's going to go in almost like rng in a way but i know for me in the 93 points i I want the biggest and highest chance to make shots with great timing and as you guys can see this is the high risk reward i'd highly advise anybody that's like you know trying to figure this game out to learn high risk reward even even if you're struggling um i don't do the same for layup i actually do real player percentage for layups and i kid you not i've hit some contested layups some other layups on a 40 layup bro so real player is pretty broken when it comes to layups i haven't tried it for three but you don't want to be in the game time decision where you timed it great, but it didn't change anything. You know what I mean? You want to be able to time it great every single time. And that comes with knowing your jump shot. And then you'll get the highest benefit for doing so. So definitely learn high risk where I would suggest to anybody figuring out this game. Definitely is it's a great way to go. So let's talk about takeovers. So takeovers, they're actually super effective and you wanna make sure that you put on the best one beneficial for you. Since this is a shooting video, a shooting tips video, I'd always recommend to anybody use spot up shooter, sniper, or three point architect. Three point architect gives you a plus um, eight on your three pointer and ball handle. Sniper gives you a plus 10, but you need an 89 three point shot because it helps you shoot from half court. And then spot up shooter requires an 83 pointer, which is flexible for any build. Um, and gives you a plus 10 three pointer to your build. So if, it, if you have an 83 pointer, you get a 90 when you have to. Now, how do I get this? How do I get these benefits of level four and five? Because you might notice when you use these takeovers, it might have a lock on it. I'm actually gonna drop a video to explain it better, but just to give y'all the sauce since y'all clicked on this video, I got y'all. You wanna go to one of the street ball courts. It doesn't matter which one. I personally went to the indoor courts and picked, I personally went to the indoor courts and versed the guy with the red jacket, the dunker dude, right? I beat him, he came on my team, and I literally run with him every time. I throw him oops all game. And what this does, it helps you to get to these level four um, takeovers. And you're grinding for the 10 games to unlock the next level of takeover. It's gonna cap at level three. And when you hit that cap 10 times to unlock level four, and the same thing for level five, you wanna hit that cap at level four and stay at that cap 10 games in total to unlock level five. And the reason why I say play with the dude with the red jacket in the inside court or on the outside court actually, play with the dude with the robot head, is because you can throw them oops and every like 
two alley-oops is like a level. I kid you not. Every alley-oop or two is a level. So let's say you do six alley-oops, you're definitely going to be at level three slash four, bro. It's super broken. I spam this to get not only my overall, but badges. I spam this to get my takeovers and even my overall. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you guys on some sauce, okay? But you'll be able to unlock takeover and you will be able to, but you'll be able to unlock takeover and you'll be able to get your three-point shot plus 10. I technically have an 102 three-point shot when I get takeover. So, hey, you can snooze on this takeover method, but I'm telling you, bro. Next thing I want to mention to y'all is hot spots. So, hot spots are basically the spots on the floor where you hit the best on the court. And mind you, it doesn't take park to unlock it specifically, but you can unlock this anywhere you go, whether it's pro in 3v3, whether it's lethal shooter zone, or my career. So, I'm going to show you guys three different methods real quick. These are going to take one. The first method is going to be my career. What you're going to do is go to your options and quit, settings, change your difficulty to rookie, five minute quarters, hop into my career game and just shoot the lights out. Like literally in all the spots that you want, let's say you like the top of the key better or you like the wings better, whatever. You wanna just shoot in those spots, I would say 10 times to ensure that you actually get the hot spot. And I mean, if you're violating them, you might as well sim with VC at halftime and that's less than like what, a six minute method like to get your hot spots. Next thing that you wanna go to the maps and check out the art of shooting. Then you wanna hit up the boy lethal shooter and pretty much get your shoot around it. You pretty much just wanna hit him up and ask him to do one of the drills. Now there's a few drills you can actually do in the lethal shooter zone. There's one zone for one week, which means that you can get one hot zone from him. You can get two zones for two weeks, and you can get three zones for three weeks. So, you take that risk. Now, I ain't gonna lie, Lethal Shooter is a lethal shooter. You know what I'm saying? As y'all know, he has ease in real life. So, I'm sure 2K made him with a 90,000 three-pointer, bro. So, if you feeling yourself and feel like you can beat him in a shootout, do your thing, man. I'm the type of dude to go big or go home. So I'll do the three zone for three weeks because that lasts a while. And it just maximizes your time. If you get this out the way, you have three hot zones knocked out in what, two minutes? Crazy. So that's a quick method. And of course, you can also get them from park. Now that's actually what I did. I shot um, in park with no hot zones actually. And that's how I have a 45 three percentage. I have no hot zones as we speak. I'm earning them now. But trust, when I come back with those lethal zones, bro, I'm going to be hitting. I'm getting this three clip to a 50, 55, bro. But they're super important. If 2K Labs has any stats about Hot Zone, I'll put them on your screen. But in the previous years, this would literally change your green window from like this to this, bro. Like this differential I'm talking about. This is no Hot Zones, this is with Hot Zones, and this is Cold Zones. So if you have Cold Zones out there and you're breaking, I mean, there's a reason why. They're so important in 2K. Some people undervalue them. I undervalue them myself. And I will tell you that after Hot Zones, uh, I'm going to be shooting like crazy. So the best way I learned how to do this was in the mic court and I'll okay, shoot you guys in the control cam to your right. Your boy's gonna teach you right, okay? No limit the teacher in this thing, okay? So the way that made sense to me and shout out to Grindy, you know what I'm saying? He explained it. The motion of doing it is basically the opposite of the dunk meter. If you guys don't know, the dunk meter is when you basically flick the right stick up for like a half a second and then hold the right stick down to finish it out. So just like this, as you guys can see, that's the dunk meter. But rhythm shooting is the opposite motion. Instead of going up and then holding it down, you're gonna hold it down until you're about to flick your wrist and then flick the right stick up. So just like this, boom, watch this, just like that. And as you guys can see, it says, I widened that for my setting, but the tempo was excellent, therefore I agreed it. Mind you, I have high risk reward on. So if you master this, bro, you literally like have two ways of greening it. Like this is gonna be really good for spotting. So if y'all are in the corner, you know what I'm saying? Y'all catch it, feel me, catch it, hold on. Catch, dang, what a pass over there. Same timing, the way the way I do it is when I'm supposed to release the ball, I just flick the right stick up, just straight up, not even holding it. It's that simple. I feel like it's the best way for me to explain it, but watch the controller cam too, because bro, this is actually OP. How many shots in a row did I just green, bro? Y'all count, bro. Like, I'm not even like, this is on part difficulty, of course, you know what I'm saying? Like, I did that to myself, I can't lie, I did that to myself. But hey, this is super broken. It's gonna be crazy for Spotify. I know for me personally, I think I'm gonna be doing this like off the catch and shoot, like every time, dang near if I can. Doing this off of dribble moves might be a little bit tougher, I'm not gonna lie. Like, if I'm doing this, like, it would be like, not like what I'm used to. It'll be on some like 2K17. I think you shoot with uh, right stick in 2K17 sometimes. But I mean, if you can be, be subconscious enough to know that, hey, I have a better chance at greening this with the, um, Rhythm shooter, bro, you, it might convince you to do it more. You know what I'm saying? All you're doing is instead of holding X or square to shoot, you're flicking the right, holding the right stick down to shoot. And to release the ball, instead of letting go of the button, you're flicking it up. Base, it's literally as simple as that. Let me see if I can make it very late, bro. Very early or something. I want to see if I can make it very early or late or something, bro. I'm going to try to, like, time it off. The time, the tempo was, like, excellent or whatever. See? Very late. Tempo excellent. This is insane. 2K, I don't understand, like, what's going on. Mind you, I know I'm in my court, but I'm on high risk reward. So, if I time it with X and hold it very late, I ain't making that jump, bro. Heck no. It's not a matter of me being a great shooter and knowing my timing, but sometimes with this rhythm shooter. Now, mind you, I don't know if this is going to be in part the, um, what's it called? The very late. I hope not. I would hate to lose off a very late. But the fact that you can, like, time it off in some ways and still green it because of your tempo or whatever is crazy to me. 
I'll do more studying to see like what's the actual difference between you know this and um, just shooting with square but from what I'm seeing just in my own shooting bro like right now this is my first time using it I fake can't miss bro this is crazy I'm hitting everything it's like I fake can't miss bro it's like a, it's like a, a zen bro appreciate y'all watching this video not the fake ones have left I'm dropping my jump shot I'm giving y'all my sigs as well copy these down copy these down if you want my dribble moves and then jump shot creator this is my jump shot Cam Thomas Oscar Robertson Colin Sexton 22 ticks down from release which is basically the middle between push and release is when I release my jump shot. This is so perfect because after you apply all these shooting settings and you apply this jump shot, I guarantee you, bro, shooting results are going to change. This is only for small guards. Unfortunately, I will drop a jump shot for every single build. 2K has only been out for a week, so y'all can calm down. You know what I'm saying? Calm down if you don't got your shot right. Calm down if this is not your best shooting year already. But give yourself some time, man. You're going to figure it out. It's going to take time. And nobody out here shooting 80% from three yet. Now, if you are, Teach me your way, bro. No cap. Another thing about shooting this year is having the right build. I'd recommend you check out this 6'3 point guard build that's able to do everything on the court on NBA 2K25, bro. See y'all there.